Rio 4 of Arrival used more music composed by Robert Farnan, during which he continued to develop his secondary themes. For the first major fight scene of the series, Robert Farnan broke away from the conventional approach for a sequence such as this and composed a jazz score with an apparent disregard for the action it was accompanying. Robert Farnan explains the thinking behind this approach. Instead of writing dramatic music, which we called Mickey Mouse music, which was ca capturing every punch and every stab, they just got a very exciting jazz sound going. And it seemed to cover it so much better. And a lot of composers used it. Henry Mancini was one of the first in Peter Gunn. And it was so effective, just drums and brass wailing. And it, it made it terribly exciting. As a matter of fact, they were playing against the fight rather than with it. It would appear that this concept was possibly planned for elsewhere in the series. During an improvised session held in advance of the main recordings, Robert Farnan supervised another... Contact imminent. Contact imminent. <laughs> You may have noticed by now that Robert Farnan's music tended to be percussion-led. Robert recalls the sounds he used and his earliest influences. A lot of the cues that were written for the Prisoner series by me were written for the percussion instrument of the orchestra because they're very dramatic sounds and uh, the fact that when I was in my playing days I was a percussion player so I, I knew quite a lot about the instruments and what they could actually do. And uh, as a result, th they selected these uh, particular items, which I was told were very effective. Sometimes just one drum doing a particular beat, or a glissing timpani, which I used in, well, in The Prisoner, which is a very eerie effect. Matter of fact, that was the first effect I wanted to use for the balloon. But uh, I didn't. I, I used something a little bit more melodic. But as I said, I, I understood most of the percussion instruments so well that uh, I've been writing for them ever since. The final reel required Robert Farnan to record one track of incidental music, which was to start as number two takes control of the helicopter and finish as it touches down back when number six started. This was initially rejected, and as we'll later find out, was recomposed by Wilfred Josephs. Like many other members of the crew who worked on The Prisoner, Wilfred Josephs tried to bring a feature film quality to his contribution. He created several sub-themes within his music which he used throughout his incidental tracks. The main theme served as number six's theme. Strong oboes with deep resonance almost created ready-made sound effects for Rover. However, these had a tendency to work in opposition to Wilfred Thompson's multi-layered sound effects. A harpsichord-oriented theme was used over the supervisor and the control room. And finally, number two also had an ongoing theme. Wilfred concluded Reel 1 using one of these sub-themes, but like his earlier tracks, this was never heard in full since it fades out on the broadcast version. 
We present A1M7 in its complete form. By the time Wilfred Josephs became involved with the series, it had been decided that the brass band at the beginning of Reel 3 should play the Radetzky March by Strauss. As a result, Wilfred arranged and recorded the track, avoiding the use of Chapel's library music. Only two takes were attempted, the second of which, although used, fell apart a few bars before its conclusion. Listen out for the distressed cries of the technicians. His work on Reel 3 was completed by two short tracks, A3M4, which survived through to the finished episode, and A3M2, The Birth of Rover Scene for which Robert Farnan had already recorded his incidental music. This was re-recorded by Wilf. At this stage, the victim, who is attacked by Rover, had still not been added. A restored version of this track also appeared on The Prisoner Investigated. Reel 4 brought the first of two Wilfred Joseph's tracks, which fell to an unusual fate. Both of the tracks had been scored and recorded by Robert Farnan, only to be subsequently rejected. Wilfred Josephs was then asked to produce incidental music for these sections, but had them rejected in favour of Robert Farnan's initial attempt. This was a pity, since both of Wilfred's tracks had developed the use of his sub-themes. In the first track, A4M2, listen out for the oboes over Rover and the harpsichord over the supervisor. The singer. And you. Bob's next track, A2M4, starts to develop a secondary theme for the incidental music using kettle drums. Reel 3 starts as number 2 gets into the taxi, which explains why Channel 4's print has a small section missing during the reel join. Ex-Admiral, excellent chess player. Hope he finds a partner. Jack! The brass band, who play the Radetzky March in the finished episode, are listed at this stage as playing library music. According to the Music Bible, it would appear that Robert Deerberg had shortlisted several tracks from Chapel's record library for use on sequences such as this. A3M2, the birth of Rover sequence, was scored by Robert Farnham. But at this stage, the stray villager who's attacked by Rover was not included in the cut, so the music could not be used once the scene was re-edited, since it would no longer be a satisfactory fit, being several seconds too short. 